It'll be one to go this time by. Coming to the green, buddy. Coming to the green. Let's go get him. Go, go, go. Dig, dig, dig. Go, 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 go. Get your motor running. Head out on the highway. Hey, NASCAR.com. Uh, Rick, uh, the 48 and the 88 have been consistently good uh, for the most part of the year, but the, the 24 seem to struggle with some of the setups at tracks they've traditionally been strong. Uh, have you guys got an answer for that? or have you, uh, Tell me what you've been uh, going through to try to, to close that gap. You know, it, it, it's been frustrating. Uh, they, they're working awful hard. They're testing, and uh, the car is just, just, like Jimmy said it a minute ago, it's a, it's a fine edge, and you can't... Uh, what works for one driver doesn't work for the other driver. You've got to tune the car to the driver. And uh, we've got some really good tracks for the 24 coming up. And, but we've definitely got to get better in a mile and a half. And, you know, we've had unbelievable things happen, breaking suspension pieces. Uh, and, uh, and, but we just haven't been, haven't been as good, nowhere near as good as he was last year. And we just struggle. But we're, uh, we're going to keep keep going keep working and uh, nobody's given up on that team or any of our teams we work hard together and we'll we'll keep testing and and it's uh, it, it's almost like the light comes on when you find a package that's good for that driver and that's what we've got to we've got to figure out we'll go over to the press box uh, Jay Hart Yahoo Sports um, Jimmy and Chad I think I speak for most of the fans say um, next time maybe not tune the hot rod so well um, wondering if, if at any point, Jimmy, you actually just sort of felt lonely out there um, because it didn't really, you didn't really have much traffic to deal with all night. No. Um, I, I just fell into this rhythm with Chad giving me lap times and trying to uh, run as hard as I could to make sure at the end. I, I didn't think we would stay the dominant car for long. Uh, these guys on pit road do a very good job of closing the gap, and I didn't want to run around at 80% and have them running at 100 percent and tune their cars right and at the end us not have the car where we needed it to so that's why i i just went you know ran hard and there's one segment where we were concerned about fuel and uh at that time i kind of slowed down but other than that i mean i ran you know ran real hard all night long to make sure at the end of the steal if there's a shootout we had the car we needed to to win so no we'll uh go to dustin <clears throat> Uh, Dustin Long, Landmark Newspapers. Chad, uh, between you guys, Kyle and Carl, the three of you guys have combined to win o almost 70% of the races this year, which is not typically the type of domination you see by three teams. I just want to ask you first off, is what is it that you see where there's just the three guys seem to have been dominating the wins? And the second thing, everybody talks about this finicky car. With what you found tonight, do you have confidence that this can carry over to some of the bigger tracks later in the season? as it might have with the older car, or, or are you almost back to square one going into the chase in some sense? You know, I feel like, um, you know, it's, it's going to sound kind of contradictory saying this, but the driver-crew chief relationship, I think, is what sets things apart with this car right now. Um, and Kyle and Steve hit it off real well right out of the box, and I think their communication level was, was ultimately high. And Kyle did a real good job of explaining to Steve what it was the car was doing. And uh, Carl and Bob Osborne have been together for quite some time. And I think we saw when, when Bob left the 99 car, the 99 car's performance uh, dropped dramatically. Um, so I think that when you look at uh, what, what's going on, it's the driver crew chief communication level and confidence in one another that, that carries this thing up a little bit higher. But now it is extremely finicky, um, and you, you, but you can fix it. And I think if you're going to try to count out the 24, the 20, the 17, any of those guys, the 9 going into this chase, I think you're just fooling yourselves. Um, you know, the 99, the 18, and us, we could walk in there with our, our shoulders pulled back and thinking they're going to go in there and just whip everybody's butt. But that's, I think that's pretty pretty cocky to even think that. Do you feel like you have some that this is pick, helping you with the bigger tracks later in the chase? And would that have helped? Would it, that have been the case with the older <clears> car? <throat> with the, with the carryover? Every track's a little bit different, yeah. uh, especially with this race car. Um, more so than the cars that we had last year. You know, with the Monte Carlo SS, we were able to run um, a basic package and then tune it from weekend to week out. Uh, with this, we're doing a racetrack. Um, so we'll just have to wait and see. Stay tuned. That's the million dollar question we're hoping we've got the answer for. <laughs> <clears throat> I guess what's the purse? 
<laughs> Jim Ottershaw, Observer Chad, uh, with about 20 laps to go, I think one of the crew members from the 16 came down to talk to you. I think it was about the stuff that was on Greg's front grill. Mm -hmm. Could you just talk about what they were asking you if you would do? Yeah, they asked us if we would back up and, and try to help them get that paper off the grill. I said no. <laughs> I mean, I mean, quite honestly, I mean, I mean, 15 laps to go. I just looked at them, I was like, look, I know what you guys run for a water system. You guys are going to be fine. You can make it 260 degrees for 15 laps. Um, yeah, I mean, like, you can't blame them. Hell, I'd do it, you know, <laughs> whatever it takes. But uh, I just don't know. You know, I just can't, can't do that. But, I mean, it's, it's a line between sportsmanship and helping your competition at that point in the race. Well, yeah, I mean, let's, let's put it this way. If, if he would have caught us and then stopped, and went back to the two seconds we were ahead of him, then, <laughs> then that would have been okay. But I'm, I'm, that's probably not going to be what happened. You know, I'm pretty sure he would have got on us and dogged us a little bit and then tried to get by us. So, no, I mean, you know, it's just the way it is. You know, Jack's not a big fan. Throws zingers out there about me and Goodyear and everybody else in the sport. I mean, why the hell should we help him? Are there uh, further questions for Chad? I guess we got that started. Specifically for Chad. <laughs> Chad, I was timing your pit stops, and they seem to run like 14.0, 14.0 consistently for a four-hour, four-tire and fuel pit stop. Is that part of your success? Is the consistency of the pit stops, or? Yeah, we had uh, we had one bad pit stop today where um, our jackman got caught up in the hose of the rear tire changer and uh, slowed us down pretty, pretty much. But uh, the other stops were very good, very competitive. Um, you know, depending upon the way that you time the stop, you know. It, it, it shows different numbers, but um, our picker does a very good job, very solid guys. Uh, we put a group of guys together at the beginning of the season in hopes that a little bit of maturity, a um, little bit of experience would come, come into fruition and, and pay off for us, and uh, it's definitely working in our favor right now. And this is for Jimmy. Uh, when you came out sixth and the next thing you know you were back in the lead, what were you saying to yourself and how were you handling the car to do that? Um, I'm, I felt like we could get back to the front. I thought it was going to take a little longer myself, but... Uh, Went through turns one and two, and I'm just flying by people, and I just started smiling. I'm like, okay, this won't take long. <laughs> and we're, we were back to the front. It doesn't happen often. You have a car that can drive through dirty air like that and, and get to the front. So uh, just a lot of hard work paid off tonight. Uh, if there are no more questions for Chad, we'll let him get to tear down. Thank you, sir. Yep, thank you. Oh, sorry. Well, we, sorry, we got one more for you, popular tonight. Go ahead, Owen. Lee Spencer, Fox Sports. Chad, what would it mean to you to be the only crew chief in NASCAR history to win three consecutive championships? I don't know. Come see me in November. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, I don't know. Um, I've been real fortunate to have had a lot of success and uh, a lot of cool things happen in my career. Um, that would be another one that would be a huge milestone and something that I would definitely like to uh, figure out the emotions after it happens, and uh, we just have to wait and see. Thank you, sir. Yes, Tim? See you. Okay. For Jimmy, um, there, there are four drivers right now outside the top 12 who have won a race this year, including the Daytona 500 winner. Can you uh, imagine winning the Daytona 500 and not being in the chase this late in the season? Yeah, that's, that, that's a tough one. Um, you know, the one part that I'm sure is in that team's mind is, Daytona and the restrictor plate racing is much different than what the bulk of the season is based on. Um, so I, when you're living the, the, in the world that we are in, um, it, when, it, when we won the, the 500 in 06, we left there and it's like, great, this is a specialty event, but doesn't mean that we're, we're going to be shooing for the chase or any of those things. And we had to get to work in other areas, in, in road courses, downforce tracks, short tracks, all that stuff. But um, you know, there's... It shocks me to see some of the guys that are outside uh, that cutoff zone right now. Uh, some great teams and drivers that, you, you know, you fall into a, a rhythm of thinking they're, they're kind of guaranteed chase um, for the chase. So it's, it keeps us on our toes. It keeps us humble. And you've heard us make comments throughout the year that um, our first goal is to make the chase because you never know what type of luck you're going to have. And if you get a couple bad weeks uh, late in the regular season, you can be in big trouble.